Welcome to another Visual Pearl brought to you by the Society for Pediatric Pain Medicine in collaboration with Open Anesthesia. Today we will be discussing the technique for ultrasound guided stellate ganglion nerve blocks. The stellate ganglion is a group of autonomic nerves that supplies sympathetic function with the ipsilateral upper extremity as well as the head and neck. Its function plays an important role in pain, as well as sympathetic output to those regions. Keeping its function in mind, we find indications for blocking this group of nerves for complex regional pain syndrome, phantom limb pain, brachial plexus injuries, upper extremity emboli, and even in post-traumatic stress disorder. The stellate ganglia is known to be located at the level of C7, However, as we will see later on, our approach should look at the level of C6 in order to avoid injury to vital structures. Another key landmark is the longus coli muscle. The stellate ganglia is located anterolateral to this muscle, which can be identified on ultrasound. The scalene muscles provides another easily identifiable landmark under ultrasound. The ganglia can be traced by following the scalene muscles medially towards the longus coli. The most easily identifiable landmark under ultrasound is the carotid artery, an internal jugular vein bundle. With this structure in view, as well as the longus coli muscle, we will next go over a safe approach to identifying key structures before performing the stellate ganglion nerve block. As mentioned before, although the ganglion is typically found at C7, in order to reduce the risk of injury to the vertebral artery, we will want to approach the stellate ganglion at the level of C6. Starting at the clavicle, identify the carotid artery and internal jugular vein with the vertebral artery deep to the major vessels. We begin scanning cephalad, paying attention to the presence of the vertebral artery. With the vertebral artery in view, we continue to scan cephalad until the artery disappears under the hyperechoic shadow of the transverse process of C6 and the body of the longus coli. Once we arrive at this view, we note the carotid artery and jugular vein anterior to the ganglion, as well as the longus coli posterior to the ganglion. Using the in-plane technique and avoiding major structures, deposit 5 to 10 cc of injectate to ensure spread to the level of C7. Once the injectant is deposited, there are several ways to identify a successful block of the stellate ganglion. Look for warmth in the ipsilateral extremity as well as signs of vasodilation. In addition, Horner's signs are common due to the sympathectomy at the cervical ganglion. Vagus nerve involvement can also occur, so be on the lookout for difficulty swallowing or changes in a patient's voice. These are temporary signs that should resolve over time with monitoring. Thank you for watching and please consider contributing to future Visual Pearls by reaching out through the Society for Pediatric Pain Medicine or Open Anesthesia.